This can be served over rice with whatever your favorite condiments are for chili. Got some sour cream, cowboy candy, and a bit of cheese on here. Hello, howdy, and welcome back. I'm Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader. So, I have a busy day today, and you know what? I thought I would bring you along kind of vlog style to show you. I have some stock solutions to make. I have some, let me see, I got some salsa to make. I have chicken chili to make. So I thought, well, I'll bring you along for the chicken chili for sure, because I wanted to show you that. It will be using some stuff from my pantry, and it will also be using stuff harvested from the garden. So that's pretty cool. And, you know, chicken chili, it's good. So I thought I'd bring you along for some of the other things. I also have a couple of arrow gardens to clean up, so I thought, well, I can show you that. I'm not going to do an in-depth dive into how to clean them, but I thought, oh, you know, I can just show you how I do it, and you can just kind of watch, you know, the sped up version and just see. So, see how it goes. I enjoy watching some vlog style videos, so I thought, you know, I enjoy watching them, maybe other people enjoy watching them, so I thought if, if it's something that people like, I could give it a try and see how it goes, and go from there. And obviously if it's something that just isn't that popular on my channel, you know what, I don't have to do them anymore. So I'm going to get a little bit of water in there, get that dissolving. Okay, while that sits and dissolves, we can measure out the component for solution B. I do have a more in-depth video on my channel on doing these stock solutions. This particular one, I'm doing 300 grams because I want, I just want 300 ml of this. I don't have a lot of arrow gardens left running, so I don't want to have a lot of solution lying around because it will, it does kind of get a little green in there. Like, it's not mold per se, but it's not algae either. I can't figure it out. It's these balls of something. So, kind of gross. And, you know, I'm growing food to eat, so I don't want to be ingesting whatever that is. Okay, I get some water for this. Okay, there we go. It's got water in it. And let's get this all dissolved. It just looks disgusting. Okay, here we go. So, these need to dissolve, and they will be ready to go next time I need to feed. So in case you didn't watch the first video, I'll make sure to link that, but pretty much what I do is I've got this set up so I add pretty much about 5 ml per liter. So a sprout will get 5, a harvest gets 10, and a bounty gets 20. But I have been feeding my pepper plants and tomato plants 30 because they just seemed like they were sort of struggling a little bit and I wanted to make sure they were getting enough food and apparently they weren't getting enough food. They are looking so much better. So I'm going to get this cleaned up. This was kind of low-lying fruit. It was quick and easy to make. So now that I'm done with that, I will probably move on to cleaning arrow gardens, which is not easy, not fun, and not quick. Okay, so when I clean an arrow garden, I normally bring up the base. And my stuff is in a room with no sink, so I literally have to bring it upstairs to clean it. And so I just don't clean it. And so they get kind of gross. So I have this is plugged into the base, but it's not plugged into the wall. What I'll do is I will wipe down the base. And let me do that right now, actually. So I give the base a nice wipe down because not only did I have spider mites in the room, but I do kind of have aphids as well. Not aphids, sorry. I mean, um, fungus gnats. So I want to just make sure everything gets nice and clean. I know you can't see some of this, but... But everything gets really gross down there because I just don't bring it up to clean it. I just don't have the facilities down in that room. And it's really a lot of work to bring it all upstairs to clean it and then slip it all back down. Especially when it's full of water, full of plants, full of stuff. Okay, uh, let's see. Drop this down. Oh, 
There we go. So you should be able to see a little better. So I normally take my, this is one of those fake paper towel rags from Walmart, but I just wipe it under the hood, just get that part clean. Then I wipe the top of the hood, get that part clean. I basically try to wipe every surface so that I can try to clean off as much of the spider mite population as possible this way. And then it'll just kind of sit in quarantine for a little bit before I pack it away. And that will hopefully clear out my spider mite population. Let's see if these are... Those are looking a lot better. Let me get those out of the way. So that's the last of the leak. But it did actually form a nice little leak base. So I just cut that off. It's awful uh, wet too inside. It's got a lot of liquid. So I'll take that little piece off the end. So making chicken chili, I might actually try to put that in the chicken chili tonight and see how it goes. Right, that's all safe in the fridge. Okay, so I like to do this part with gloves because, well, you know, number one, arrow gardens can get really gross. And number two, I'm going to have my hands in water for a while. And yeah, I like to protect my hands at least a little bit. First order of the day, if there's a trellis, I take it off. I will wash the trellis as well. It's just going to sit in soapy water for a little bit while I do everything else. Okay. Now, I have the... Most of these are empty. I just emptied them. This one is not, because it had a lot of roots. And as you can see, the roots are dying back because the, uh, the green onion didn't do very well. So... It was just a good time to deal with all of this. So I just take it as take as much of the roots and stuff out as possible so I'm not sending anything gross down my sink. Now this one might be a oh there we go, that wasn't too bad. Might be a bit of a problem getting it out of the basket. But you can see it really just filled it up. So I normally just try to pry it back and wiggle it loose. Wow, that one was easier than the other ones were, that's for sure. Okay, and at this point it doesn't matter if I break any roots, because I'm not saving it. Again, I just try to clean off the basket as much as possible, and I will wash that up and use it later. Okay, get this in the garbage. So again, if you have, like, chickens or any animals, this is the great stuff you can feed them. I'm sure they would love some of this stuff, especially the fresh greens in winter. Okay, so, there is a sponge under here. You want to be careful when you're pulling the roots out that you don't pull the sponge out and lose it. Again, I just go through, clean it up as best I can, and then all of this can also go in the garbage. Okay, what I like to do is I like to get the pump out. I don't like to get water in the end here. I don't know if it, it's probably not good for the pump, honestly. So I just try to deal with that. So I'll put the pump in the sink with the thing hanging over so it doesn't get wet. Wow, that is gross. Now this one's really tricky to get off. I find if you can um, jam something in, there's these little clips here. If you can jam something in on one side and break, well not break one of them, but to unlock one of them, you can kind of pop the rest off. There you go. Or if you push to one side kind of diagonally, you can kind of pop it off as well. But it always feels like I'm going to break it. Now, for the lids, there's these little tabs. The hard part about these lids, taking them apart, is if you push on the tab and you push on the top, the lid isn't going to go anywhere. So I find you almost need to jam your fingernails in this little crack here. It kind of, it's a little loose there. Once you get that going, you can kind of get one of the tabs off. Once you get one off, you get a little bit more space, so then you can start popping the rest of the tabs. One over here, one over here. You just kind of have to work your way around. One over here. There's two in the middle, so there's one there and one there. You gotta get those ones. And there we go. And all of this needs to be cleaned. I will also do a bleach wash on this because I want everything to be really clean so that the next time I use it, it's all good and ready to go. I have a very old scrubby. I try to use the really old ones that I don't use for my dishes anymore because they're a little bit softer and I don't feel like I am um, 
scratching at the plastic too much, but we do have kind of a hard water that creates this brown ring around things. So that just kind of has to get scraped off. And maybe if I would clean these a little more often, I wouldn't have to deal with it, but again, if I was in a better house that had a nice sop sink down there, and I just don't. You know, we can dream big dreams, but we're not there yet. All right, everything just gets washed. I just set it off to the side until I am ready to reassemble everything and just give it a major bleach wash. Now I have a super old, super soft toothbrush. I just go through to give everything a good scrubby scrub. If there's any stubborn things, I will use the scrubby pad for. Generally, I try to limit the scrubby pad use because it will scratch the plastic. And then those micro scratches are just another breeding ground for problems. The pump does come apart a little bit more, so if you need to clean inside, this panel comes off. And I do believe that you can actually take out some of this part as well to get access to the little impeller. So if you're having problems with your pump not doing well, it might be worth taking some of this part and also just cleaning in there. So I think this piece comes off as well. There we go. So yeah, it's really hard to see, but there's like a brown scuzzy ring just around where the water line is. So that's that's just basically where the scrubby pad has to come in. Yesterday was a busy day for us. We actually got a uh, little seed starting outside greenhouse tent thing. And so we put that together and my arms are so sore in the weirdest of spots. Like my wrists from twisting in the pole pieces and my like biceps just from trying to push all the pieces together. It was... The instructions were kind of a little on the poor side, but the uh, build itself was pretty easy. So we got that all set up, and then while we were at it, it was such a beautiful day that we went through and started pruning some of our fruit trees, which is a, uh, that's a job in and of itself, because we've just got so many of them. But, yeah, we made a pretty decent dent in that, but yeah, boy, my arms are tired. So bowl. This gets a good scrub to get the brown ring off. The sponge, I, or the, this filter cover, I normally just pick off what I can and then kind of squeeze it in the water to try to get everything out. And if there's any more I can pull out, I try to pull them out now. So it will come off, it just requires elbow grease. and clean. So at this point it's just time for a bleach bath. So I use bleach because we had bleach on sale, a ton of it. I don't use bleach for anything else so I might as well use bleach for this. It gets a quarter cup, no matter what arrow garden you're doing, which is funny, it gets a quarter cup of bleach to a bowl of water. So you just fill the bowl up. Which is weird. You'd think that the smaller ones would get less, the bigger ones would get more, but that's not how it works. And then this just snaps back together. That goes towards the front. So let's get everything put back together again. This can actually get filled. Always fill with cold water when you're bleaching. The hot water will inactivate the bleach. base, plug that in, and plug it into the wall. You can set it if you want. Neat trick. This is like one of those little insider hacks. I've, I've never heard anyone mention this. When you first plug it in, as long as everything is working fine, 
it should run for five minutes and then it'll auto turn off. I forgot to put the siphon back on. I do that every time. Don't forget this part. Especially after you've got bleach in there and everything. Because it goes in the top section, which is always hard to get off. Right, let me see. Forget that. Put that back in. And get this all back together. Try to not leave bits of your glove. Okay. Put it back in. Okay, so you let it run until it stops running, and that is your five minute bleach time. And then I'll change the water with clean water and do five minute rinse. So it'll be the same thing. I'll just unplug it from the wall, change the water out, plug it back in with fresh water and it will do a five minute rinse. Okay, so while that one's going, I'm gonna wash up the other one and then I can take the water in this one and pour it into the other one and do them kind of both at the same time. So I'm kind of using the same bleach over again. I don't feel like I'm wasting as much bleach that way. While the Arrow Gardens are doing their bleach beach and rinse cycle, I'm going to clean these. And it's pretty easy. I just use the toothbrush again to just get what I can off. It's not one of those things that just doesn't have to be perfect. The algae will dry out and die. The water stains are not going to come off. But it won't affect growth the next time I use it. So just uh, try to get as much algae and crud off as possible, but I try to not sweat the small stuff too much. Um, toothbrushes are good because it really gets into those grooves. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I just stack them up, as you can see on the side of the sink here, and just let them dry so that they're ready for next time. There you go. And I just let them dry. On to the next task for the day. We did a nice big harvest of some peppers and tomatoes. So these peppers are going to be set aside for chicken chili tonight. You can use any peppers you like. My son does not like spicy, so we're making it with these peppers. This is the snacking pepper, and this is the pretty and sweet pepper. So they haven't changed color yet, but I think it'll be fine, and it will go well with salsa. And then we have a whole bunch of tomatoes. I do have a handy dandy little coring tool that I sometimes forget to use. So I also have to use up some of my onions from the garden. Mine came out really small, but they, they need to get used. They're starting to sprout. So I do have, I have a more in-depth video on making salsa. This is just going to be, I don't have limes, I'm just going to use lime juice. I do have some fresh cilantro, so I will be using that, because I do have an arrow garden with it in there. So I will make sure to post the link for the salsa, so you can see how that comes together, instead of me just sort of speeding through it. So I like to do my tomatoes on a big dice and my peppers and onions on a small dice. So I'll get that switched over. I can clean my hands up and then I'll get the rest of it going. You definitely see I had a little bit of sprouting going on with that one too. There we go. Let's get this all seasoned up. Again, seasonings are kind of to your preference. Okay. Some lime juice. You can use lemon juice as well if you want. A little bit of citric acid. I find that my lime juice is not very acidic. I mean, I guess that's good in a way, but not when you're trying to make something acidic. Okay, get some salt. I'm going to be really stubborn about this. I'm not going to mess up another bowl, but I'm going to fight with this one. Okay, so it's always best to taste it 
with what you're going to eat it with. In this case, it's taco chips. And make sure the salt is on point. And then at that point, I can uh, make sure the acid is on point as well. But I can add in the cilantro. I can add in any spice if I want to, like cumin or uh, chipotle seasoning, any of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go track down a chip, give this a quick taste, and see where we're at. I like to taste the juice just so that I can make sure because that's where the salt is going to be first. And more salt, more acid. A little bit of this goes a long way. So definitely be careful. Acid is definitely there. I think I could use a little more salt, just because I always undersalt. Add a tiny bit more pepper, just because the pepper tastes good. I'll give this another taste, and then hopefully it'll be on point, and then I can add some cilantro. And again, if you don't like cilantro, because that's just not your thing, get some limes and put in the lime zest. That is that is the best way to ramp up that lime flavor, which. That's what I feel like cilantro tastes like. Let me know below if you think cilantro tastes like something else, but I always find it tastes a little bit like limes. Yep, that's it. Oh yeah, there you go. Fresh from a sprout. Got a couple in here that uh, leaves aren't looking all that great. Might almost be time to start another batch of cilantro. Okay, there you go. Salsa. So this will go with dinner tonight. And then, so this needs to go in the fridge to marinate. I will be taking a break for lunch, but I will come back and show you how to make chicken chili. So, you have to let me know below if you like. Every once in a while I do a vlog style type post. I'm thinking of trying to incorporate them in and doing them maybe one a month or Two a month, one a week, I don't know. We'll see. I do want to give you guys, you know, kind of a snapshot of what's going on with some of these things that, you know, are nice ways to use up stuff in the pantry or the garden. So, um, things are thawing outside, so hopefully soon I can do like a garden tour and show you guys sort of the growing space that I'm working with. We did have a chance to prune some of our trees this weekend, so that's, that's exciting. Okay, I'm going to get this in jars and marinating. So it's about half an hour before dinner. I did start prepping a lot of this stuff so I could get it going. Now it's just uh, shove it all in and cook it. So I'll start with the onions, get those browned off a little, or at least softened. And then I'll slowly add each part to get it going. So this is about one onion, maybe slightly, it's either a really small onion or uh, I guess a really big half onion. I've got a little bit of leek, leek is optional. I've got about half a pepper's worth of pepper, but, you know, use what you like. I will be putting in some garlic. I've got the chicken all cut up. We do have a chili packet 
like a seasoning packet I'll be using, but I'll also be adding other spices to it to jazz it up a little. I found that in the back of my pantry and I was cleaning up my pantry. And we don't like this particular mix, which is probably why it was back there. So I'm going to just use it, get it over and done with, and never buy that kind again. So just personal preference. We don't like it. And I do have enough spices that I could just mix up my own, you know, chili seasonings. But, you know, sometimes on a weeknight, you just want to throw a packet in and just be done with it. So... So as I was cutting up the peppers, I cut the jalapeno first, so that was the red one, and I saved the seeds for that because that's the one I've just been so looking forward to saving seeds from. So I now have seeds saved from them. Uh, I guess if the spider mites take over my plant, I'm less concerned now because I finally got what I wanted. I can now grow more plants, so that's the big thing. Because I think for everything else down there, I have seeds for it. Maybe a bit of salt in there. And get everything else going in. Now the peppers were spicy, so if you're kind of sensitive to spice, obviously you know use the peppers you want, but uh, make sure you've got good ventilation so you don't uh, gas yourself out. So I want to bloom the spices in the oil. I'm going to put in a little bit of dried cilantro stems that I ground up. I'm going to put in a small pinch of chili powder, just because I do have some hot peppers in there already. Put in a little bit of smoked paprika. And some ground cumin. Now if I didn't have the spice packet, I probably would have put in more chili powder and probably some uh, cayenne pepper flakes or chili flakes or something like that. So I want to make sure these come into contact with the oil for a little bit. And, you know, this is an interesting thing. One of the reasons why I got into canning, not only did I have a lot of tomatoes that, you know, I thought would be a great way to can up and save, but I noticed that some of the brands of tomatoes They've got cores in them, they've just, they're really nasty. So, this is like my last can of tomatoes that I found in the back of my pantry. I'm going to puree it so I don't have to deal with any of those uh, issues, and I'm going to use it and get it gone. Okay, so this should simmer for a while. Your mileage may vary on how much you want to simmer it for. I want to reduce this down, make it a little thicker. We like our uh, chicken chili thick. You can use any meat source for this. It doesn't have to be chicken. I mean, you can use any poultry or any beef. So I'm going to simmer it down, let it thicken up, let the flavors mingle. I will give it a taste before we eat. Uh, you can put in beans at this point if you want, or right before you serve, just to warm them up. I will put in some corn before we eat. So that it has a chance to, uh, it's frozen corn, so it'll have a chance to thaw, warm up, and cook a little bit. So, that's where we're at. This is dried tomato powder just to help thicken it up a little. I like using tomato paste. This can be served over rice, with whatever your favorite condiments are for chili. 
Got some sour cream, cowboy candy, and a bit of cheese on here. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this vlog format, let me know. Um, I certainly would like to do more of them with different uh, sort of things going on in my day. So let me know below. And if you did like this video, let me know with a thumbs up, share it so other people can also find it. And I hope you're subscribed. And I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.